we are live. Um, so, podcast land. This is my very first first podcast. My Ooh. name is Ernie. Yeah, how about that? Rock and uh, roll. Yeah. Woo. Let's, get this, let's light this candle. <laughs> <laughs> so, I am the CEO of Bullseye Media. And uh, we do uh, marketing strictly for dentists, but we also have lots of dentists out there that have started a street, a sleep practice and are struggling or want to start a sleep practice. Yeah. So this podcast is for that audience. If you're a dentist out there and you've got a sleep practice and it's not yet rocking and rolling and you want it to rock and roll, hopefully we can help. If you're a GP out there thinking about getting into sleep, Dr. Murphy and I are going to give you lots of great advice. So Tips, speaking tricks, of, and all kinds of stuff. Yes, you can use, yes. So, for sure. Dr. Murphy, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Mark Murphy. I'm the lead clinical faculty for Prasanna Sleep Technologies, and I do what they do. I practice uh, one day a week. I'm in the office. Uh, fortunately, Prasanna lets me moonlight and do that a little bit. Uh, they won't let me do two or three days because I do have a full-time job with Prasanna's, but uh, they let me go in the office a day a week. I used to work with my daughter. Now I work with my wife. So it's a very low-key, very high-touch, very small sleep practice, but the lessons I've learned by doing that and developing the relationships, I think are things that you and I can share with people today that will be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. So I know there are three key things we're going to talk about uh, for getting into sleep, and these will be across uh, several different podcasts, mm-hmm. but mining your customer mm-hmm. base. So you'll teach dentists how, who are transitioning into sleep, how to talk to their existing patients about yeah, it, absolutely. Um, how to go direct to patient, direct to consumer, and then thirdly, how to build a referral network. So I know those are the kind of three pillars that you've talked about for growth, and we'll be talking about those throughout this podcast. So before we get started, though, I'm going to tell you why I want to do this podcast with you, is that you, when you and I both spoke in ADSM, I was the opening keynote, and I thought I was really good. I thought, you know, lots of rounds of applause. You were. Well, thank you. But then Dr. Yatros came along, and he was really good. And I thought, well, I'm going to be the second best presenter here. <laughs> and then you presented, and I thought, man, this guy's pretty good. And where you had me was at one point, and it you went yo yo bitches. I don't know, I don't know why you said I did that, say yo yo bitches. It is, it is. I have these moments of clarity, and then I have these moments, squirrel, where uh, I don't know what's coming into my brain. And I've been that way since I was a kid. And I, I think I've walked this fine line of when you can and when you can't say something like yeah. that, and gotten away with it most of the time. Okay, well, you got away with it there. Yo, and yo, I, it, it <laughs> that's exactly right. So it's I said, a technical term. It's I a scientific said, term. I said, I got to get to know this guy. You and I met over coffee, and we agree that there is a lot between us that we can share with, with Dennis looking to get into sleep. Yeah. So speaking of that, um, you've got, I mean, I've got experience helping Dennis grow their sleep practice, but I've never been a dentist opening a sleep practice. You have. Talk about that experience going from a GP to full-time sleep. I will, but first I'm gonna throw some sunshine right your way too, because one of the reasons I wanted to do this podcast is because I've been enamored with talking with you. We've had some great conversations about topics. It it moves to a higher level right away. Um, You're all about helping the doctors you work with. It's not an empty promise like you're just worried about making some bucks off of selling them something. And I always, I think you can kind of feel that sometimes in relationships. And so I like seeing that and you know the attention you want to pay to detail and your customers and their needs. I think you appreciate that. Plus, when I had you all build me a website, I loved it. And so honestly, I've got some experience with you guys yeah, right. in terms of what you what you and your team can do. I like that. And anybody who wants to go to functional with a K, by the way, which of course is funky Cole Medina. <laughs> you know, that's me. So if you want to go to functionalsleep.com and see the kind of website you all build, you'll see some pretty cool stuff there that thank you. you all did really well for me. So thank you for that. I honestly forgot you were a customer. You had me on your <laughs> bitches and I completely <laughs> forgot you were a customer. <laughs> I didn't I didn't have to spend any money with you, just yo yo bitches and you're that in. Was, I was in. I like that, it. That, I like that's it. all it took. I like it. So yeah, so, so I've already forgotten your questions. So there you go. <laughs> so for dentists out there that are uh, thinking about going into yeah. sleep or at the beginning of sleep and maybe struggling to grow it, just talk about how you got into it, what you learned, how you got to where you are now as it pertains to DSM. So so I had a weird pathway into sleep. Um, I have to go back 30 plus years ago. I was teaching at the Panky Institute with with Keith uh, Thornton on a Key Biscayne. And uh, and Keith is, of course, one of the great pioneers. He's right here in in Dallas area. And Keith is one of the great pioneers and he developed some of the most innovative and cool devices at the time. Uh, for oral appliance therapy. And I was teaching with him at the Pankins. We were teaching a temporal mandibular um, joint problem course, you know, TMD course. And he starts talking to me about how these people actually have sleep disorder problems and sleep disorder breathing and all this stuff. And I'm like, you know, I'm worried about dots on the teeth and where they grind and all this stuff. And he said, no, nah, you, you just can't make a regular appliance for these kind of people that have sleep disorders. They need a, an appliance that holds their jaw in a forward position. And that was kind of almost sacrilegious because at the Pankins, we were talking about centric relation and the 
the joint in the con on the condyle in the fossa and all the parts and pieces lined up perfectly and then chasing all the dots and he's like now i want you to bring that jaw down and forward i'm like what and so he taught me how to make the first very rudimentary 30 plus years ago tap devices and it looked like an upper impression tray that was custom made out of acrylic with a handle sticking down like this out of the front out of the roof of the mouth yeah and then on the bottom the tray was kind of flat on top so this thing hit on this and the only way you could the only way you could close is to stick your jaw for it, and this would fall behind it, or this would come up. So he taught me how to make that kind of device. And so I find these patients who were snoring and had crappy breathing, and I don't even know if I knew very much about sleep apnea or AHI scores. I mean, this is 30 plus years ago. We were helping these people. Now we were making sometimes their jaws uncomfortable. We weren't using pre and post tests. We were doing all the kinds of things that has pissed off physicians all these years. All the kinds of things that they've come to distrust in our roles. So I did that for a number of years, was treating patients, everything. And then I had this epiph epiphany where I wake up and I'm thinking to myself, you know, I, I feel like maybe we're um, doing medicine uh, without a, a physician's license. That this dental thing I'm doing is stepping across that line into physical medicine. So I started to back down on it, put that to bed, quit doing it, went back to just treating TMD patients, had a nice little practice, everything's good. I'm teaching, I'm lecturing, I'm living great. <clears throat> Excuse me, I end up I'm with uh, uh, microdental laboratories with Len Liptak, our CEO from Posamnus. We're inside there and uh, they're going to develop a competency. This is 2012, 2013. They're going to develop a competency of making a sleep device. And they hire a team to do that. And I said, um, you know, I do some lecturing and teaching for you while I have a number of days of contract with them. I said, I actually know a lot about sleep. And they said, really? So I'm on the team. So now I'm wearing the prototypes, giving them feedback. And we're getting it from other dentists as well. There's a lot of people involved. And then the brainchild of this, you know, Sun Kim and Dave Coons and Len, the people that came over from 3M that really were the, the founders, if you will, mm -hmm. the, the new pioneers, the new innovators, you know, they're going to do this all with artificial intelligence. They're going to do this all with CAD CAM. They're going to do this. And it seemed like a good idea at the time, not just to develop this device, but that if I was going to have this role in helping them develop the device, give them feedback, et cetera, I should probably have some clinical experience in it. <laughs> and seeing as I had some not so good clinical experience, maybe I should do it the right way the second time around. So I went out and tweaked a little bit of my education. Steve Carson is a good friend of mine. I picked his brain a lot. Keith Thornton, again, come back to him, uh, have breakfast with him once in a while and, and chat him up. And sure enough, rounded out my education. And now I started working with physicians, started doing things like that so that I could go into the office and do this a little bit. Now I was not gonna be how I made my living, but I needed to be fiscally responsible about mm -hmm. it. Um, I was still going to go out and lecture and teach and consult and do the kind of things I did. But uh, I, I had to develop a competency in being able to do this because if I was going to lecture and teach and help other people be successful at this, mm -hmm. I should know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. So I, I needed the clinical level of expertise, not just the pretend sort of level of expertise, which a lot of times dentists who, who are, or hygienists or anybody who's been removed from their role and is still telling practices five or 10 or 20 years later how to do that, I'm like, horse bucky. Yeah, it's a little bougie bougie science there because they're not actually doing it anymore. Yeah, well, you know something else that's horse pucky is uh, <clears throat> you know unfortunately a lot of dentists that are looking to expand services in their practice they'll go to an event, a conference, and they'll hear about sleep and they'll hear you know this is this is the greatest thing since ice cream. You need to add this to your practice. The average sale is four or five thousand dollars. You can do it all day long, make a ton of money. And, uh, you know, the, the, the presentation that I gave at NADSM that you saw, it was the whole, you know, field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. Those same dentists, State. yeah, they, they got out of dental school and they moved to a growing area or they bought somebody's practice that had an established group of patients and they grew it. Like over time, it grew. Um, the story that I told there was that when I was a little kid, I guess I ate a bunch of candy and never brushed my teeth or something because I had a lot of cavities. <laughs> and my dentist was literally across the playground uh, from my elementary school. And so I'd walk there for dentist appointments and I went there so much. I got to know the staff. Sometimes my mom would just say, Hey, I'm going to be running late. Go hang out in Dr. Burgess's <laughs> office. So I was there all the time. So I, you had a key to the door. Yeah, yeah key exactly. Key I, was, I was seeing patients a couple of days a week. Um, so my whole life I knew I needed to go to a dentist. Everybody knows that, right? Everybody knows that you go get your teeth cleaned twice a year. You go and you, everybody knows they need to All you have to do is build it. Uh, yeah. All you do is build it. Exactly. Flash forward. 45 years later, um, I was asleep on the couch one night and my daughter came over and like shook me awake and she had like fear in her eyes and I thought the house was on fire. And she said, dad, dad, I thought you were dying. I was like, what are you talking about? She said, you were gasping for air. 
And I said, yeah, exactly. I said, hey, sweetie, the next time I do that, record it. So she recorded it. Uh, my uh, PCP is a good friend of mine from college. And so I sent him the video and he said, normally I'd make you come in for this device or for, this, for this advice. But he said, you know, clearly, dude, you've got this text med instead of telemed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. He goes, dude, you've got sleep apnea. I'm going to uh, refer you to a sleep doctor. So I went to a sleep doctor, uh, went in, they told me what sleep apnea was, you know, thank you for that. I, <laughs> I'd, I'd Google that, you know, already going in, but I had, uh, you know, probably 25 year old explaining me what, what sleep apnea is. Uh, so I see the doctor, he explained to me what sleep apnea is. They sent me home with the device, uh, took an ad. An, an what do you say, sent him with the device? A uh, sleep test? Sleep test. Right. Sleep test, yeah. Okay. So did that, brought it back, uh, saw weeks later, came back in. He said, sure enough, you've got sleep apnea, you need a CPAP. Got a CPAP, took forever, got lost in the system. CPAP got lost in the system. So this process started in May, and by August, I still didn't have uh, have anything. So was, the system is a little broken. It is so broken. And so then I was on the I was uh, talking to Dr. Yatris, and I was being, I was going to be going out to see him out in California, and he was talking about the difficulty with with uh, patients learning about stuff. And I said, well, man, I got to tell you, I've got this firsthand experience. And because you didn't tell me in apnea, when you come out here next time, I'll I'll scan you for one. So he did. I wear Personas now. My AHI went from 23 to 2. Okay. So changed my life, sleep better, amazing. But I just got lucky having this, this phone conversation, you know? So I think what's interesting is that the, I, I think that dentists getting into this are going to have to have a change the mindset from if I start this practice, they will come. It's you got to start this practice and you got to get out there and evangelize. You got to tell Amen. people about it, and that costs money. So the money and time, money and time, energy, everything. money, time, energy. Yeah. Um, so it 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 was it's interesting that I had that perspective mm-hmm. that I've been through it, and then you know of course the other thing was you know the insurance and um, you know I just just to be honest I just paid uh, Doctor Yatros for the device, which I think then went straight into your pocket. <laughs> Well, some part of it did. Yeah, some part of it did. Depending uh, on how much you paid him, some yeah, part of it did. Yeah, and I got lucky, but but I, I've got firsthand knowledge of, uh, you know, you, 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 somebody's got to know they've got sleep apnea. They've got to be willing to do something about it. They have got to learn about the alternatives. If they, they've got to go through the insurance thing of, of at-home tests, maybe overnight test, then they've got to be a sleep, uh, sleep CPAP fail. And then they've got to find out about an oral device, and then they've got to see what their insurance covers, a oh, whole gamut of things, which which makes it difficult. But that now that we've depressed our audience, yep. <laughs> everybody's <laughs> tuned off to that. Your yeah. podcast yeah. future, it's, it's over. You're it's dead, over. doctors, doctors. Hang on, hang on. Good <laughs> news, we're here. Give to us help. one more chance. We, we, we are you only get one chance. Now, Mrs. Chance to blow. Your opportunity <laughs> comes once in a lifetime. Ah, Lose ah, yourself in the breathing, ah. the moment. You want it, never let it go. I, I knew Eminem yeah. was going to be in here. Got to do it from Detroit. Yeah, gotta, exactly. Got after my man. I didn't plan this, but I think this is a perfect ending to this particular podcast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, audience, now you know what this is about. Uh, we have got our next podcast is going to be on mining your uh, client base because if you're you're a GP getting into uh, sleep, the low hanging fruit, the least the path. To, Path of least resistance. 100%. All that is mining your your database. So we're going to talk about that next. Uh, thank you all for joining us, and hope you tune into our next podcast. Before to do that.